Hi, I'm Danny Boyd, and this is Cinema Sticks, a celebration of film and film form. Okay, check it out. You're cruising over the Atlantic. You swoop down onto a busy Miami crowd, push through the front doors of a club, circle around the room, and land at the booth. Two minutes long, one continuous take, except that it isn't. Let's watch it again. Helicopter shot across the ocean, crane shot down into a dolly push, through the door, and onto a Hollywood soundstage. Three shots, two cuts. Did you spot him? Those were the opening minutes of The Birdcage, shot in the mid-90s by Emmanuel Lebesky, whose illusions of sustained long shots have become practically modern legend in Hollywood. And yeah, his work over time has become more sophisticated, more diverse, and more difficult to parse, but here, the goal wasn't spectacle. Let's start with the, premise. the choice to shoot long takes, touring tracking shots, and wide frame scenes was to tap into the parentage of the film itself. Something starts in your pelvis and works its way towards your heart. Because The Birdcage is based off a play and directed by one of the most acclaimed film and stage directors <laughs> of all time. What do I do with Albert? I mean, how do you make Albert into a housewife? Well, you'd have to send Albert away for a few days. Are you nuts? You try sending Albert away. But Dad, we, we've got to get rid of a few things around here. What? What things? Elaine and I loved Kajo Fall for years and years because it's one of the great plots. No, you take your knife. It's about family. And you smear. Men smear. Smear, that's it. And. We couldn't get the rights, and we couldn't get the rights, and then we did. That was The Birdcage's director, Mike Nichols. He and his creative partner, Elaine May, practically redefined improvisational comedy in the 1950s and yes. 60s. It is a moral issue. A moral and issue. To me, that's always so much more interesting than a real issue. Yeah. <laughs> Because, because you, it, there's a fiber to it. That's you, right. You can feel Something it. Yes. To follow in the papers. Yes. But it wouldn't be until The Birdcage in 1996, after two long and affluent independent careers in Hollywood. This is Robinson. You're trying to seduce me. <laughs> that the two would reunite for their first cinematic foray together. May writing. Chewing gum helped me think. Sweetie, you're wasting your gum. And Nichols directing. John Wayne. Oh God. Couldn't we start with someone easier? And although The Birdcage is based off a play, Howdy, man. Nichols and May took much of their inspiration from the French film adaptation released in 1978. Oui. Oui. Names were changed, locations moved, politics were recontextualized. Actually, it's perfect. I just never realized John Wayne walked like that. But at its roots, The Birdcage remains fundamentally one thing. Armand! A farce. Help it! Are you trying to ruin me? And that meant it needed enough space to play out its action. Hit me. And its comedy. I don't think I get it. Try more gum, Albert. Sometimes together. <laughs> and sometimes. I never wear shoes because they make me fall down. A little delayed. Call me! Oh. Perfect. Oh, what is this, sludge? Yes, it's sludge. I thought I'd make a nice change from coffee. Bag lady! Good morning, Agador. Good morning. Shooting wide allows for all the characters in the scene to play out their actions without cutting. And like in a stage play, Nichols would use a set's natural depth to keep less pertinent characters in the background rather than out of frame. I don't understand. Yes, you do. No. Then when it's finally time for a long shot to end, they're expertly broken by either a match cut or by a new character entering the scene. I think you should come downstairs. She's trying to take his chewing gum away. It's amazing what a director can achieve with just one angle. It's a wonderful show. It's the most intelligent show on television. Or one setup. Plays are about where on stage everybody is. 
When you have everybody in the right place on stage, the scene can happen. And by the way, if they're in the wrong place, the scene can't happen. That's partly what rehearsal is about. Like in the theater, rehearsal was a huge deal for Nichols, who practiced with his cast for weeks before production began. That's unusual for a film, and it was in rehearsal that Nichols would allow his cast to improvise and adapt the script that they would shoot with later based on choices made in the moment. So when it came time to actually shoot the movie, everybody had a complete understanding of what precisely they wanted to do, how they would move, what they would say, what? and where they would say it. We'd like the champagne now. When you want to shoot your action wide and continuous, this kind of preparation is everything. Because it means you don't have to cut things up in the edit because it didn't work. Of course, no matter how much you rehearse, you still can't control everything. And you ultimately have to hope for the best. Well, certainly in a movie, that to me is the essence of making a movie, that you prepare like crazy and then you wait to discover what happens. Every day is a surprise. That's the joy of making movies. You have to hope it's a good surprise and that they got it on film. Wrong response? I'm not sure. Take it from the top. On any given shot during production, Nichols had a rule. Once he was satisfied with the take, he would let his actors go off script. Dance, you do fussy, fussy, fussy. You do Martha Graham, Martha Graham, Martha Graham. Or Twyla, Twyla, Twyla. Or Michael Kidd, Michael Kidd, Michael Kidd, Michael Kidd. Or Madonna, Madonna, Madonna but you keep it all inside. Sometimes even the best off-the-cuff moments don't always fit the story. But when the surprise is right, the improv makes it in. Perhaps one more snackin for the road, do you mind? When the snackin beckons. That was improvised. You're going to the cemetery with your toothbrush. How Egyptian. That was improvised. Or shut up! And this? Here's a note for Catherine. Go put it on the downstairs yeah. door. Well, that was an accident. But pay attention to the way Robin Williams fights to save the scene afterwards and keep himself from breaking up. It's okay. We're all right. It's fine. Just shut up, goddammit. It's all right. Stop crying. God damn you. What are you standing there for? Go. Go. She'll be here in a minute. Go. Damn it. Fuck the shrimp. I, there's something about a group of people looking at something, all apprehending something unspoken that is very exciting to me. It's, it's what I love in the theater at its best, and it's what I love in movies, that it's like you describe the space around something, and the thing that in the middle that is not referred to is, is apparent as a result. There's so much more to say on The Birdcage. It's cultural significance, it's dense satire, but for all of that, there's simply no substitute for the real thing. So if you're in the mood for something smart and funny and sweet, or you just miss Robin Williams as much as I do, go watch The Birdcage. And Joe Maltby, thank you so much for the recommendation. If you want to help support Cinema Sticks and be a part of choosing movies and shaping the future of the channel, you can find me over at patreon.com slash cinemasticks. I'm Danny Boyd. Thank you so much for watching. This is